We have um, high risk state retirement because we are government versus a private ambulance service. Pay is very competitive for the area. And I really feel, and I'm not trying to give a scripted answer here, but I really feel like they're invested in my career. All of my coworkers' families, I mean, everybody lives here. And that's what draws me back to Escambia County. I don't want to leave Escambia County because we are a huge family between EMS, law enforcement, fire department. You work with them, you know them, you see them. They're all family. Auto lifts, which lift the patient to the back of the ambulance for us with just the touch of a button. I was actually for a good while concerned of whether or not I was actually going to be able to maintain this career forever because of my injuries. But one thing that keeps me here at this place for a going more than likely a full career is going to be because of those auto lift systems and the dedication that they want every single ambulance to have that. It, it seems small, it seems tiny, but for me personally, that that's a huge, huge deal. With our call volume, you get a lot of good experience in a short amount of time. There's some services where you may run one to three calls a day, and you better hope that those three are critical if you want really good experience, whereas if we're running you know, eight to 12 calls in a day, um, statistically you're gonna run more of them. So in a short amount of time, you can get quite a bit of experience. We have awesome ambulances. We have the internationals. We have MDTs. We have you know computers to do our charting. We have LifePak 15s, which is top of the line. And we're always improving and we're always growing. And I just can't see downgrading going somewhere else that doesn't have all that. I come in to work 15, 30 minutes early. I take a good, good close over look at my truck, make sure that everything's working right so nothing bad follows me later on throughout the day. And uh, uh, most common days we get started and we don't stop. Uh, uh, we'll go from call to call, and by the end of the day, you're pretty tired, you're ready to go home. Um, you have some days where you are transporting very non-critical patients that you feel like you're just doing a transport job. Um, but what is interesting about it is you can be having one of those days where you, the first half of your day, you really haven't done anything critical, but that little thing in the back of your mind is always telling you that your next call could be the critical one. So you kind of, I think we're really good at not thinking or worrying about it, but you definitely have that anxiety of what my next call is going to be when they key up. There's no actual typical call for a day because you never know what you're going to get, but mostly you're going to get, you know, some elderly people who are sick, who have fallen down, um, people that need, you know, just other assistance, and every once in a while you do get more critical calls, you know, cardiac arrest or somebody having a baby and you get to deliver, you know, and those are few and far between, but those are the calls that really make you feel good inside. Normally, like if you get like a cardiac arrest save or something where you got a really good outcome, that's really rewarding. But sometimes it's just as small as someone sincerely telling you thank you. From just, you, you may have just helped them off the floor, but if you can tell that they're sincere, then that's, that's a win. You have a critical patient that is going down the drain and you can fix them you can stabilize them until you get them to the ER and you know they're gonna go home. It's that sense of you're sending somebody back to their family. It's that overwhelming, I did something good today. It was a, um, a stroke victim that we stroke alerted and took to the Westerville uh, Local Stroke Center. And with, I think as a lot of people know, strokes have to do a lot with time. And um, if you catch it early enough in their candidate, they can get a medication that can potentially reverse it. And um, this lady could hardly talk. She could hardly, you know, she lost a lot of her dexterity in her fingers. And um, like, I don't know if you've ever seen somebody who's had a stroke that can't talk. It's very frustrating because they, they know what they want to say and can't get it out. And so we did all the right things, notified the hospital, she got a CT. And later that day, that medication had worked so well that I went up there, shook her hand, and she said, hey, thank you for what you do. And it was able, you know, I was able to have a full conversation with her. And she explained to me that she, um, <clears throat> was really worried about the dexterity in her hands because she was like an artist or something and she liked to do fine details. And that's just a really, both a rewarding thing and a memorable moment. About two months ago, my partner and I delivered my first baby since I became a paramedic. And she was a beautiful little girl that was about six pounds. Um, other than that, we have, I was the first paramedic on scene to the gel explosion a couple years ago. And um, I was also the first paramedic on scene to the school bus that was hit by a dump truck and 
knocked on its ad full of students. Kind of at one of those high points right now. I'm enjoying it a lot. But even at the lowest of lows, I still wanted to come in every single day. I never, never woke up and told myself, man, I, I hate coming to work. I, I always woke up and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I wanted to show up. I still came in early. I still came in and checked my truck out. The, the most scripted answer you normally would get would be, I want to help people, which is, I think, true across the board. I don't think anybody that's doing this job would ever get into it without that goal in mind. Uh, that being said, I like being outside. I like being in the field and doing and having this couple of practice that I do. Um, a lot of people may go to the nursing route or this or that. And being boxed in the, inside all day, it's just not for me. Um, I like to go out and engage with the community, be in the field, and, and make a difference. You have to have the heart for it. It's not just something that you can show up for and be like, oh, I'm going to try it out. It's a hard job. It is mentally draining, and you got to have the heart for it. You can have all the skills in the world, but if you can't handle the things you see daily, it's not for them. If you can, then it is the most rewarding job you're ever going to have.